Are you shitting me? Is this better? Are you fucking kidding me? I've been talking this entire time. I... I've been talking this entire goddamn time. You can hear me now? Fuck. No, it was not intentional. This wasn't a just ASMR or live, like chill out with some music and watch someone paint. I was supposed to, I was talking the entire damn time because I was saying, why are you butt plug 69, Mason? I kept calling that out and I was wondering why you weren't answering why, uh, why you changed your name. I was also shit talking, uh, samurai. Also, no one wants to live in California. See, this is what I get for uh, using my mic at work because I will use it on, oh yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, I use it for work meetings just because it's kind of fun, especially because I could use, you know, 4K, uh, the my phone to basically get like high quality photos or video, plus have the mic. It's really fun. It's, it's kind of amusing to me. Um, shot taking America. True. Ooh, ka, yes, that is true. Anyway, point was actually, I'm supposed to be talking, not just vibing. God damn it. So I wanted to go a little bit over the channel, what's going on with it, what uh, plans are, and actually give a little bit of details of an upcoming project uh and go over i went over it a little bit last time i know um mason you weren't here for it uh, i think emu was in for a little bit on it uh samurai was not and potato unfortunately i think it was a little bit late for you because uh you are across the pond um but yeah how is i i is good i'm actually in a pretty good state right now painting obviously uh, but I have, I have been, while I've been off from actually doing anything on the channel, I have been doing, uh, work on something to, uh, go for the channel. Uh, Sonam's gone off to do a couple of more things on her own. So unfortunately I won't be able to bring her into the channel anymore. Uh, even though she just came back. The writing contest thing. Oh, NaNoWriMo. Uh, yeah, that ended up falling through but i'm going to be uh continuing on with that project actually in particular so i'm going to be going over uh the world that i've actually been working on for a while which i will give some details i had a bit more on it so nanorimo was not necessarily a writing contest it was just a uh write fifty thousand words in a month and definitely was not able to get that. Am I being called? Hello? Sonam? Okay. I think Sonam just came in the house with the dog. The dog. The doggy. Um, world builder, yes. Word count, uh, over, I think I have about 10,000, actually, on what I'm doing. Um, Mainly because I have one full, complete little mini story that's actually a background for one of the characters. I have a bit of the introduction of the main characters as well as interludes that actually goes over a little bit of the uh, the background in the world in general. This looks ugly and I love it. Yeah. If I ever know, don't, uh, if I'm never not painting on screen, please tell me because I don't want to not have this look like doo doo. Uh, show. Yes. So, uh, I've always wondered why not paint pieces. Of yeah. So, I mean, in this case, I left the armor panels on. Um, but like on the dude himself, he's got nothing on there except for small pieces, which 
Also, Mubby. Bobby's new whip. It is. With the harpoon. Yo. What's up? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Spuddy, it grows. It does grow. What up? Hello. I'm lonely. Thanks. Thanks, babe. So, what I have so far. Um, yeah. I'm still trying to get over the whole idea of trying to talk about it, which is, I know I'm trying to do more with it. Just, it's hard. Hard discussing uh, story bits. So what I have is a story that I've been working on for a very long time. I've actually used the world in particular in a couple different patterns. So I've actually used it for uh, a D and D one or two D and D campaigns, uh, just in the broad stroke of things. But this one is going to be a bit different. Uh, the world is called Ethios, and if you've ever been into any amount of science fiction you know the arthur c clark famous quote essentially uh any magic that or any technology that is sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from or any techno yeah any technology sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic and that's kind of the crux of the world it is basically a portion of humanity that had gone so far into advanced technology that they had become a hive mind capable of incredible feats but they were no longer able to actually distinguish themselves from from that collective kind of mindset on the entire world were birthed basically artificial intelligences consciousness that were unity oh yeah it's going to be compiled i have an entire book that has got the entire lore in it um I did it for the longest time i was wondering whether or not i would actually go into the deep lore of it but the way i'm actually going to be structuring the story is that it's going to be there but not directly told so these nine entities consciousnesses beings ai whatever you want to try and call them basically birthed from the mind of a collective humanity saw whatever hot garbage that world they were doing and decided to do better that an individual was actually just as important as the whole that left on its own this hive would destroy everything so they sectioned off into a completely different solar they found a solar system they created a dyson sphere i feel like it could be in any animal with a big rock good uh they created a dyson sphere they tore down every single planet except for one with collection points for the power from the for the collection for uh light from the sun to be captured by the dyson sphere on two particular um i want to say planetoids i guess planetoids is the best thing like moons in at the lorang points so these are the points that basically the uh asteroid belt basically lives in or chasing jupiter or following it those collection points will draw the power from the sun and send it to the planet to be used the technology that they had used was so intrinsically connected to the world though and to the people that they could not be separated so when these gods basically made the new world they couldn't get rid of the power. So most people in this world can do basic things. They're, they feel more connected to the world in general. So that might come from the sake of like a farmer knows how the plants 
feel and are able to actually really make the plants grow better or the fact that the blacksmith really understands the intricacies of their of the metal they feel it some people can go a little bit further than that think kind of like the alchemy in full metal alchemist ish it's kind of the best way of thinking about it is they can do things that are not a bend reality in some way the problem with this is that anytime you create and you have someone that something that is so intrinsically connected if your mind is not in the right place in the right headspace you can create things without knowing it a grieving mother might create a banshee in the woods that screams at the people that come nearby and kill it kill them someone's greed might create goblins someone's um jealousy might create a monster on its own a gremlin all of these things can be created they're all in connected to like folklore from around the world now it's stories from within our past history so every time a story that is connected to a folklore or a superstition it can create a monster Of course he went straight to violence. That's what he's doing. Thank you. To fight these apparitions, phantasms, fantasies, when I say phantom, phantoms or anything like that, um, what was I saying? Fa when I say fantasy, I mean what the pH, so philosophical fantasies. Of course, big rock. Someone has to fight them because they are actual real things that are created. So hunters go from town to town and try and find the monsters to make sure that they're fought. But it's not just fighting the monsters, it's finding the people that actually have caused those monsters to be created in the first place and helping them get over whatever originally created. Because if the grieving mother isn't allowed to deal with whatever happened to her like process, She's just going to keep creating fucking banshees that are going to keep killing everything. Hunters in particular are those that can actually really use the power to go into combat, essentially. Yes, there's your explosions, helicopter, big gun. Think someone that can, with their power, um, because it ha it's intrinsically related to the idea that it is something that is real. So, someone can create a bunch of lights. Someone could create a bunch of fire. Someone can use the carbon in, the, in their body and around them to create weapons or guns or anything from nowhere. But it's just creating it from the carbon that's around them. They might be able to change their skin so that way it is tougher. When this create is constant state of paranoia and damning everything, that's the thing is yes it could create that constant state of paranoia but there is this is still at the point where the story is is people are just starting to become real and there are sects in re, in the society that actually try and help with that so you have the hunters specifically that are there to help with the hunt uh with getting rid of monsters directly but then there are healers that all the, their purpose is to help those kind of those wounds that don't heal directly. So yes, you can create a state of paranoia, but if it's at least managed in the correct way, it doesn't. And that's what the story is trying to deal with is like the main characters are one, you have a hunter, uh, kind of was gonna go with Jaeger, uh, but I might change that, I don't know, but a Jagger that has her own demons. She once actually did something that created monsters that ended up killing her entire village, her entire town. She still deals with that, but has dealt with it in her own way. Two of the characters are brothers that are on the hunt from a religious sect from a, the northern part of the world that doesn't have it. 
yeah i know that's why i'm kind of a lot of the like so like the gods i've actually named them in such a way that they're at least cross um they're a little bit more cross and multicultural instead of just being like german names so hokari is the god of uh honor the god of like battle essentially or aether i think i was gonna go with the aether um a little bit of a twist on uh aesir but um what was i gonna say yeah Phladius is the hunter mother um she is actually a goddess in irish folklore days fold yes so hokori who's the the god of uh honor fatherhood all that kind of good stuff is your day is fault but yeah um but my main story is centered around those characters that are just trying to one the brothers are just trying to get away and find a place where they can actually be but they're haunted by what they have seen and also a particular um voice the hunter herself is haunted by what happened to her village yeah, this gold is coming out better now um yeah but it's all about that tension of mistrust and tension of how individualistic do you go how com community centric do you go um if we're truly individualistic how damaging can that be and just trying to be alone i mean how much disconnect do you see in the world right now and that's kind of what i want to focus on is the fact that that tension these brothers are disconnected from their original community and are basically being hunted by a different group yeah uh what was i gonna so i'm mostly gonna go off of this anyway the part that i'm actually gonna be working on because i was actually talking about in the last live stream is that i always had this kind of set up in a way that it could be used for other things instead of just being for my own story um because it the setup kind of comes off more like a D&D campaign than it does anything else. Because you can easily make it be a group of hunters that are going out and doing these things. That are hunting down the monsters, trying to figure out what happened in the village and why a ghost is hanging around. Why this particular, like, Japanese, I don't know, demon is sitting around. Or why this, um, what in folklore caused this monster to appear and then who is responsible for it whose turmoil whose emotional baggage essentially caused it think about the way like um in the witcher 3 you have the lord of oh god i can't remember it it's the it's the fort that's basically on a mountain or on a like hill and you have to walk up all the way around but his daughter had had died and that what had actually created the monster so while it is fighting the monster it is also about healing the finding out why it happened in the first place to accurately fight the monster so where's the military basically that right now because there is only the the hunters at the moment the vibes of the entire world is a little bit more on the solar punk. Well, there is technology that is very similar to what we have today or, you know, more advanced. Um, mostly, the need for a military doesn't exist currently. Currently. Because why? Monsters exist, but you have hunters. Most people can figure out their shit and not be complete dickbags to each other.
But yeah, I'm going to be building out a little bit of the world. I have that world building because mainly, yes, while most people don't know that the people that live there don't understand that they are advanced technology. They don't know what happened to cause their world. They have stories that were created from it. They have an idea of the creation myth, which could point to the idea of the fact that they live in a Dyson sphere or in a, I call it a Dyson swarm, but it all kind of works out in the same way. And when they look up, they don't see a pattern of stars and constellations like we would see. They would see a, yeah, decent society. So they would take a base. Yeah, exactly. For the moment, uh, they would take a backseat. But yeah, the people don't understand that they live in a Dyson sphere. They don't know what is technology and what isn't. They just see magic just kind of exists and just is there every day. Why would it matter? It's like, oh, well, why, why is this the way it is? And like, I don't know. It's just the way it is. How is the world created? Mm -hmm. Gods threw leaves into the sky. But when you're also dealing with uh, looking up into the sky, they don't see patterns, they don't see constellations. It is all one giant constellation that looks like um, a spiraling pattern to the north point or to the south point. So you look up and it's just lines and lines and lines of things. And one of the things that they do for astrology is they call it reading the leaves, which is to divine patterns specifically from looking at, you know, these endless patterns and just making sense of it from whatever person they're talking to or whoever they're talking to. This is also a new world. So it's not like people the people literally sprung from the ground essentially gods didn't know what they were doing they were just like okay we have a bunch of what are essentially nano machines that weren't once were humans that are just endlessly munching on the rest of the universe you know gray goo style well what do we do with them Okay, we'll make a planet for them, make sure they got power, and yeet. And it comes from, yeah. I know, I know. I was trying to think for the longest time how I could avoid just trying to use nano machines, but nano machines, son. They harden and, res and uh, fucking what is it? Uh, they harden in response to uh, impact. Play college football. Could have gone pro. Not in Ivy League, but Texas University. Nano machines, son. So I'm going to be working on, mostly the channel is going to be dedicated to the lore of the world, going over a little bit of details and going over the broad strokes of everything. So well, yes, there will be a document that will be going over the lore. It's going to be more of a broad stroke things. It will be more story time almost. So at least in the 100% emu, yep. So for example, um, no, why do I have a ping in the Discord? <laughs> yep, pretty much. I agree with that, Samurai. Decapitated head represents the people who are racist to do it. Yep. Hey, 
in some cases they're the what was it the the fl flags actually do make sense i have to figure out flags but yeah so one thing that i've all i've been trying to figure out i might do more live streams to kind of go over a little bit of the lore at least in the initial portions of it but i just don't want to use air to try and fill out the time so it might just be talking head uh videos while we go over it or just basic videos without any kind of background yeah flags are cool Although I will say, if you actually look into a lot of the like English heraldry ones, they actually do have a lot of specific meaning to them. So like blue, blue langed, what's the term for it? Um, like when they have a blue tongue versus a red tongue, the specific types of like lines they use were all actually very, very particularly chosen. Somehow do know a little bit about vexology. Don't ask me how. Um, do, 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 do. I'm actually liking the way that this gold is turning out a bit more today. Yeah, so that's kind of... Um, I don't know what to use for the video imagery, though. That's kind of the problem is like, what do I use for background? Like I said, I don't want to use AI art. And at the moment, I don't really, I, I would want to commission someone to actually do the art. Because I think paying an artist is actually a good thing. Plus I would want things for uh, later down the road anyway. It all, it all depends, but yeah, I do want to do more story-ish time stuff. So I think putting my energy into something that's my own, especially when it's something I've always wanted to do, makes more sense to me than not. potato <laughs> fair point fair point i could do that i can use a potato which most people that will be new and coming into the channel would be very confused by i have rough drafts of a couple things <laughs> ooh oh that's a good idea that's actually a really good idea Sonam what? I need you to build the uh, the Lego uh, Lego type or type machine whatever the hell what is it called typewriter yeah I need you to build it I am conscripting you to actually finally build that damn thing. Zonam's actually behind me, but she's editing her own stuff. Oh, there's a mic next to you. You should like and subscribe to <laughs> Zonam MD. She is currently doing things that are pretty damn cool and against the Sigma grind set. Right, Zonum? No Sigma grind set. No, I really like that Alan Wake style idea. That is a dope idea. I don't know why I've decided to do both of the arms at once but have you ever thought about making other flags that have been usurped and replaced um i haven't thought about flags in particular mostly because um 
they're not really i haven't thought about nations as much of like how those nations would kind of pan out right that i'm i i have some ideas on like specific like vibes but i haven't directly been like all right yeah so this country exists uh and they have this flag i know in particular like the main city where a lot of the hunters actually like, uh look at georgia it's flags of strings oh yeah i always like that it's like um when you look at the canadian flag and also some of these stuff that we've that were original canadian flags was pretty interesting to see how we decided what we went with and especially when you look at the provincial flags when they're you know not blue bells like in the states but we still have some pretty garbagey flags that still have the goddamn union jack on it because we asked nicely we were a bunch of petulant children that threw tea into the ocean that's right calling you out Yeah, it is kind of interesting to see. I think Mississippi just had a new flag, which was pretty damn good. It could be worse than Union Jack. I know. Again, bluebells. <laughs> I don't think Georgia's a bluebell state, but goddamn, some of them are bad. No, no, no. The best but the worst is Maryland. I, I will defend the Maryland flag because it is so god awful, horrendously disgusting looking, but I love it. Oh, it's not used to be. I know I take a blue this one. <laughs> See, Nova Scotia at least is kind of like. You know, heralding back to the fact that they're New Scotland, which is, they got a nice flag. I always liked that flag. That was my flag growing up, and I loved it. But then, like, I think there's, like, three or four that are just red with the Union flag. Gross. Gross. So if there is interest, I will make up a module, a quick one, for how to kind of create um, TTRPGs within the setting. Kind of, yeah. Oh god, kilts trying to figure out what everyone's freaking tartan is it's a nightmare i was like okay is the blue cross this direction and this the, the green is here and oh wait no there's some red that thin thread going through i think i remember what my tartan is but I'm trying to figure that out oh message is leaving Yeah, if there is interest in uh, setting up, at least using a module, I can work on getting that. I remember, um, it's not that bad. Yeah, I know, like once you get used to it, you can really distinguish them. I think mine's like blue and green, I think. But also, my generation we kind of lot lost a lot of our like you know heritage points my aunt still uh she used to go to the highland games back home and could play the bagpipes and i think my grandfather had a little bit more with like knowing actual scottish gaelic because that was a it's a big thing at least in uh back home So let's be honest. Highland games are best games. 
because it just comes down to who can throw the tree. Which of you big motherfuckers can throw the tree the furthest? And that is just peak. Yeah, I am going to put together a little bit of a module on at least like generally what people can do with it. It's mostly going to be open-ended because the whole point of it is that you can take in whatever folklore you want to bring into it. There should be. I agree. Um, you can take whatever folklore you want to bring into it and bring that in and use that as a basis for a story. So because it is all centered around the idea of kind of broad folklore t tales as long as there is some human connection as to why it can create it it is very easy to i would want it to be very easy for you to bring in that to to the story to whatever you want to bring to the table essentially but of course it wouldn't have anything to do that could affect broadly what the uh, main storyline is about which is the broader world having to contend with everything yeah which is just god i love my heritage some days it's so stupid but so amazing who can throw a tree the furthest again there's also the tradition in england of like chasing a wheel of cheese down a hill which oh my god british isles sometimes sometimes you confuse me other times sometimes you confuse me as to why i'm mostly descended from there other times i'm absolutely enriched by it This gold is coming out a little bit better than the last set. I'm actually really happy with that. God, Mason, that was such a good idea for the typewriter thing. And the fact that I'll be a Lego one as soon as someone finishes it. He's gonna look so dope. thing is I'm not a writer like Alan Wake is I'm Alan Wake I'm a writer Ooh, I'm actually getting really happy with this holy shit holy shit Other parts of the story, uh, if you guys are interested in, I'll keep going on it. The idea that I actually had when it came to the gods seemed like you hack. Yes, Sam Lake is a hack. No, he's not. I do love that part. The, that bit from Ricky. Um, there is nine, ten, if you count the one that I'm not going to talk about. 
I hope there's not scholarships for either. Ooh. Intriguing. Um, but yes, so nine gods. These I originally kind of tried to think about like what would actually come from collective consciousness of humanity. What, what kind of like ideas would just spring forth like Athena from Zeus's head, from what is essentially just a bunch of human brains in a vat. So, nine gods in total. The first one being Flodius, which is actually an Irish folklore god, or folk god. Uh, the hunter and the mother, protector. Um, mainly just that. She's protect. It's like mother bear kind of style. Uh, protection in the wilderness kind of idea. After that is governance. So working together, which is, uh, I think the name I gave that god in particular was Azalei, bureaucracy, working together, organizing things. For farming and, protect and uh, creating society from food organizing into cities was Yolanda. So growing crops, growing within nature, coexisting with it. Um, yeah. Yolanda, Zuzeli, Flodias. Um, after that, sitting around in a fire you would tell stories you would have plays you would have poetry you would have illusions and to entertain which is home basically homer um this pick this one in particular i have the most like idea of what they would do because they're in this world too is the gods can actually directly interact with you because they actually exist um they can come down and inhabit people or give them divine inspiration. Or if you are good enough at kind of going into the right mindset, you can actually go and visit them in the garden. The garden actually being a another planetoid, uh, wrong range point four, I believe is the term, four or five, um, which is completely opposite of the other orbiting the body in which the uh, your point of reference is actually orbiting from. So if it was on Earth, it would be on completely the opposite side of uh, the sun. It's literally just a giant server. So all the power that is actually directed to it is just to create the server space, essentially, on a giant planetoid floating in the opposite side. Um, but you can go and inhabit all of these different places. If you go to Flodias' garden, it is much more about hunting and honing your skill. Uh, Yolanda would be to actually organize and understand plants a little bit better and different planting structures. If you go to Zizeli's, it's just a giant, it's like the, like a giant city hall, essentially, of bureaucracy and working together. Homes in particular is a giant homes, like Homer is a giant theater with different rooms and stages for different types of performances home uh i feel like last was, might be uh home in particular uh the other gods when they actually come and talk to you and they see you um they will look like one thing at a time so when Flodias comes down, you'll see, yeah, maybe fiery red hair, or like an angry Irish mother who's about to beat your ass for not putting your dishes away. Uh, and then give you a nice flank of like, you know, deer, venison that she just went out and hunted and gutted and did together. Hom in particular though, Hom 
uh, never shows a direct thing. Um, home is always in flux depending on who is looking at him. So he, one moment he may look like Shakespeare, another moment he'll look like Homer, another moment he'll look like Sylvia Plath. He might end up looking like the random poet on uh, beat night or something on open mic night. He may end up looking like Virgil. It all depends and it is constantly in flux because it is always a story that is being told over it. Um, so he is always in flux. I have that in my mind because I have a particular scene that I am very excited to write and get to done because I am very intrigued by it and I want to get it done. Um, religion and art stuff to the first thing to go in. Hive mind stories, it would be nice to see. See, that's the kind of thing is where why home is the one that I know most about or like have the most kind of thought ready for him is because that is the kind of key thing is the idea of stories being important. The stories are what define humanity, define these people, define each portion of it. Um, so the gods, when they came, were created, then basically tried to bring that back into the world and bring back individuality from the hive minds. But what is the better way to go? To be a collective as one or be individuals as to be one of many or many of one in this world? That's going to be the kind of crux, crux of everything. Can you connect to people without being directly connected? Maybe. Um, yeah, so you have home. Um, what was I saying? Um, shoot. Yes. Uh, home. Uh, centered around stories. And from there, Hukari, who is much more of your, like, martial uh, god. He is much more about honor and duty and uh, within battle. Um, because there are still battles. I'm still going to... Samurai, if you're still here, yes, there will be military battles. I have a deciding whether or not I still want to keep this place in uh, the world building or not, but I have a place that is basically just going to be wild wild west america because they're so good at their healing that all they do is fight for shiggles and you know shoot at each other make big ass guns and they just nomad across the giant plains and go to casinos it's like las vegas and yeah it's detroit except they're just so good at their healing that they no one dies they get shot they get a gut wound and the doctors are so damn good they just immediately heal them back up and all right stop trying to kill yourself and fight just be a little bit better <laughs> duels are constant and it's just rough and tumble it is wild west i think i'm gonna keep it in there because it's kind of fun um but Hikari especially really likes them because that's all they do is just duel each other and have fights all the time. But it's not as antagonistic. Right? Inaccurate. American healing would be too expensive to recover. Well, the, Amer the, um, the doctors from this particular area of the world are expensive to anyone outside but there isn't so much as much property or anything uh i met a man from the soviet union and he talked about it. well the american healthcare system is basically a third world country in a gucci belt which is my favorite way to describe america because it's just goddamn accurate Okari, um, honor within, 
uh, within a fight, essentially, within battle. After Hokari, so we have Ladias, Yolanda, Zazali, um, Hokari, uh, Hokari being uh, a Japanese name specifically. Um, there is Callus, who is much more about perseverance and overcoming. Eh, the name for that, I think I can change at some point because it's a little bit too on the nose, but overcoming through hard adversity. Now seven. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's a little bit late. Sorry, man. What time is it? What is it right now? Oh, seven o'clock. It's always the pond. Always the pond is an issue. Um, but even if you are going through suffering, you're going through pain, there is a way to endure through that. And that's what callus is mainly about. It's endurance, perseverance, being better than your circumstances, essentially. So if you were to go to his garden in particular, it might help you kind of strengthen and fortify your mind so that way you don't fall into and overcome the things around you. Kaziah, sleep is for cowards, coffee is forever. Yes, I agree. Except not. Get a good night's sleep, seriously. 1 a.m. Damn, Mason. Um, Kaziah is basically if you have gone through that, how do you, but haven't been able to completely fortify yourself in the right way can you be healed and that's her entire shtick essentially in the world the people that actually would work with the hunters in particular would actually be um, healers that would be specifically aligned with Kaziah because they want to try and help people help their mind fix those issues that come up from uh, from hardship the empathy the allowing people to heal yeah uh after kazaya which kazaya is actually i stole it i am being very blatant i 100 percent stole the term kazaya from the first album from one of my favorite bands which is protest the hero well they're not my favorite band anymore but that album shaped me quite a bit Ooh, give me some coffee 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 give me uh yeah. Uh, Kazaya by Protest the Hero, which is their first album, and it is really fucking good. Don't let anyone tell you that is not. That and Fortress are incredible and have shaped me as a person. It's still looking like poo poo, but it's not too poo poo. After Kaziah, there is what is uh, oh, many a many a something with an M. I can't remember uh, right now. Um, God of Knowledge, not Mencia. Um, his garden is basically like a giant library of knowledge that you can go in. He's kind of like the idea of study of knowledge of knowing so if you're a scientist you would particularly like go to that his mind area to learn more and become more um knowledgeable in your specific like domain in your area nerd yes he's magnus actually no he's not magnus um he might have an araman who's trying to get into his library but he keeps kicking out you don't have a library card? No library card. You cannot make it into the library. Because remember, having fun isn't hard when you have a library card. And yeah, fucking hell. I'm, I'm going to kick myself for not remembering the name of this particular god. Drive. Down 
around somewhere. Ethios, Ethios, Ethios. Uh, Genalis? Do I have an under here? Back. No. Here we go. Um, Gaian. Change the name. I forgot about that. Gaian, God of, God of Knowledge. Uh, God of Knowledge and Wisdom. After that, uh, you have Fortuna. Easy enough. Her world is basically a giant casino. Her garden, the place you go to visit her, is a giant ass casino. Where you test your fortune, and the fortune is with the bowl. Easy peasy to go with that one, I think. Get through the idea of that one. But that is the gods that would you could directly interact with. They mo mostly in an abstract portion, but you would still be able to like call upon them to know how to do things, and they would be there. And sometimes they can like avatar people. Depends. Dice gods. Yeah, Fortuna would be the one that you'd pray to, to be like, please give me sixes, please give me sixes, come on, I need sixes to save all this squad. If I don't get a six, this squad's gone. Fortuna, for the bolt, for the bolt. Um, yeah. You created the dice god. <laughs> Yeah, I'll never sympathize with this. She's not necessarily, well, actually, yeah, she is a character. Shit. Um, but just, yeah, shit, yeah, technically she would be a character. I mean, sometimes, sometimes Fortuna doesn't favor you. She doesn't watch over you the way it is if you're bold enough you can get all sixes definitely not poor decision making an assault that was ill-timed on my part but the thing is you were bold fortuna would favor that Fortune favors the bold. Gotta always keep that in mind. Damn, I really like that idea of like the background. Mason, such a good idea. I am blatantly stealing it. The other thing too is like I'm keeping this in a way so that way like it's very easy to plug and play things. I have a couple things that I uh, with the world that I've kind of built out that are I think are kind of interesting. Uh, so like So like the one story that I actually have fully kind of fledged out as a short story is basically um, the Hounds of Acteron, which is an ancient Greek uh, story about how Acteron, a hunter, was in the woods and he accidentally saw Diana, the huntress, god, 
Um, he saw her naked, which is a big no-no because she doesn't generally like people. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Um, I always like Diana is very interesting, but she basically says, um, if you leave here without speaking a word of this, you will come out with a, a lot. If you speak a word about this to anyone, you will die. And he's like, bet. And he walks out into the woods. Um, he utters a word while he's in the, in the woods and his hounds immediately turn on him and chase him down and eat him. But the story that I'd be particularly that, like with this short story is a little girl that tries to see what her father is doing in his workshop or in his like um, his lab. And she is told by some people that she she sneaks in. She's told by some people that she gets in there that she can't speak while she's in there, and she can't tell anyone what it is. It's a top secret area. So she doesn't. Uh, he gets reported to HR. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> HR is just a <laughs> pack of wild dogs. Oh god, that's so accurate. But yeah. I have to go. Yeah, yeah. No, go sleep, potato. It's 12 o'clock in the morning. Jesus. Um, but yeah, she ends up saying disagreeing with her father says something like it wasn't her fault and then everything goes still stark silent and she just hears the howling of dogs from outside as they begin to make their way through the facility that her father works at she's left in his office and she just hears the dogs ripping apart everyone that she knows in the facility I'm not going to sleep for now. Why? Go to sleep. Seriously. Sleep is good. So, this little girl is rescued but forever has the scars of basically knowing she was responsible for everyone that she knows dying it's simple but she created it she broke a rule of storytelling of an ancient folklore. That's the vibe I'm kind of going for. Hope this looks good. Move over a little bit. Make sure that the uh, visual is still good for the... For the painting. For the painting. I should give a new, a new Ben Dean carrier, a boy's at. What? That doesn't sound like democracy. Why aren't you spreading managed democracy? Disappointing. Adequate anti tank. Uh, could be.
Ooh, I'm actually starting to like how sharp this looks. I certainly done a lot better with the non-metallic. I'm very happy with this. Um, major thrusters are armored by armored cars and uh, lightly armored cars. It sounds like you can deal with every threat. That's what I'm hearing. As long as it's a lightly armored car. <laughs> That didn't happen. The next Dembski. Are you talking about me? Aaron Dembski Bowden? Prefer to be the next Adrian Tchaikovsky. Or uh, Pierce Brown. God, I love Pierce Brown's writing. He's so fucking good. Genuinely, such a good writer. Except he spends way too much time thinking about the Roman Empire. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? I mean, I'm writing a book about it daily, every minute. To which I actually don't think about the Roman Empire that much. Oddly enough. I wanted to compliment with the breeze. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, my hope is that it at least kind of makes sense. I mean, it makes sense in my head, but who knows if anyone else who like is hearing this actually is making sense of what it, my ramblings about ancient gods that walked among us and ah. These kind of things have been in interest in me for a long time. And last little bit, I've had a nice like spur into basically what I, the exact story that I'm going into, which I am very excited to kind of integrate. It's things I've learned about that I want to bring in. Mostly quantum mechanic bullshit. Making sense doesn't matter considering how many people love to. Okay, yeah, uh, you win. As long as it's compelling. Then again, I look, like you said, Dark Souls, Warhammer, and then just all the things that are really bad writing. They all exist and they all have niches somehow. Especially Warhammer. Yeah. Yeah. Especially considering how much they go on about the freaking Horus Heresy. God damn, the Horus Heresy just took up too much energy. trying to put so much effort in this back part because this is going to be never seen. Yeah. Great story setting matters more than anything. And that, yeah, I completely agree with that. If the environment makes sense, if the way that, and it's also characters matter too. A good character can hold up a 
really bad setting. But if you can combine the two, it makes a massive difference. Compelling, interesting people. There's a reason why people like um, Aaron Dembski Bowen so much is because he wrote the Night Lords and had them as characters very well. But I will say I don't like his writing at all because uh, Gates of Eternity, the Siege of Terror book, was awful. I did not enjoy it. It was bad. I will repeat this because I've repeated it a couple other places, but Saturnine is the best of them. And it still has its plot issues. But god damn that opening scene with Dorn and oh god what's his name um bleh, the in interrogator Frodo the, the remembrance or whatever his name was god their conversation was so good dialogue matters so much and he's back Oh. All right, let's get some white into this bitch. Oops. Imperium decaying and collapsing shouldn't be shown it. Yeah. It. <laughs> It wasn't like the Siege of Terror wasn't bad. It's an interesting story, but just there's so many things that they had to make concessions for because it's part of a broader story where they kind of had to plot issues. Boy, the embarrassing English you might be knocking. Yeah. Plot issues. Well, it, the thing with the Siege of Terra in particular was that, like, fucking uh, Gates of Attorney just had the best example of it. But I went into it, and if you were reading it, it doesn't need to be stated. But I had no idea who uh, Arkin Land was, or Xenophon, or a couple of the other characters, uh, the Flesh Terrors, and things like that. And what he kept doing was in the middle of battle scenes was you would have Arkin Land running for his life. Really cool, really tense. You don't know if he's going to live. You don't know if he's going to die. Um, or at least I didn't. But then he stopped in the middle of action uh, to basically say Arkin Land would re later like be reticent to tell people about this and would say that he actually acted extremely honorably. He's like, no, stop, stop, stop. Say that after he lives this encounter, not in the middle of this damn encounter. And just kept happening over and over and over and over again. It's the tonal disconnect. Yeah, it just, it jumps out in that particular one. And I think we were talking about this last time. Um, it just jumps out. And I hate it. I hate it so much. Like, I don't, just, I don't care. Don't tell me if he lives or dies or not. If I know, I know. If I don't, I don't. Let it be. But yes, what you have missed is just more of going over the lore. Uh, this is mostly going over a lot. Letting other people know um gd was uh going over the lore going over a little bit of the what we'll be doing in the future uh what i'll be doing uh sonam is on her own channel uh if you want to go subscribe and watch her videos they're actually really good stuff on medical stuff uh sonam md pretty easy to find her uh she is currently editing a video i don't know which one Tennis elbow. Um, because she likes the sports stuff and she likes to stab people. With a needle that has good stuff in it. Right, Sona? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. But yes, go go subscribe to her channel. Go watch her videos. She has a whole thing on uh, the Sigma male grind set. That's bullshit. Kidding. Um, but biohacking in particular. I'm actually going to put a link in the Discord. And that's when I saw I think she stopped uploading the channel. No, she started uploading again. She is currently uploading. <laughs> Harsey, as it was, for bullying that would... Uh, everything falling apart because daddy issues is stupid. E yeah. I mean, plenty for familiar familial drama, but it does get a little bit trite. And yeah. But like I said, there's some really standout points. And I think those points are like when it's not about the Primarchs in particular. But there are really good Primark moments that I would say are very worth the series. Is that Warhammer? Yes, that is Warhammer. This are um, what we're discussing is Warhammer currently. Uh, the thing I'm working on is a Knight Valiant. I'm just working on the weapons. Sick. Yeah, thanks. Um, Fulgrim, wait, you said fucked up? Oh, I missed the second word. Yeah. But again, this is why I personally think that uh, of the Siege of Terror books, uh, was it Saturnine is the best book because it's not really about the Primarchs. You have really good dialogue about the... Um, the role of faith in a war, essentially. The role of understanding, the war of history, the role of uh, role of history. It just it's so well written. It, like the dialogue is so well written. Dan Abnett did a really good job on that part. Like I goddamn love that book. I could be much better at my edge highlighting i'm very happy with my edge highlighting i did not think i would say that oops uh one of the 40k primarchs which primarch uh 40k version or the horus commemorative yeah no um i was reading what i've been reading reading the uh, Inquisitor series, so I'm actually just finished through uh, Eisenhorn, and now I'm on to Ravner. Ravner's alright. Eh, it's not a bad series. I just had a problem with uh, at least the first Eisenhorn series, the book, that it felt too much like prequel. It felt too often, it was like, and this is why I never smiled again. It's like, but Am I supposed to know that you never smile again? Is that a whole thing? Is that a thing that's like in a previous other book where you've popped up and discussed the fact that you never smile? Exactly. I'm actually getting really excited about my own edge highlights. I, I can't. They actually look good. I'm trying not to say much about them because they're actually turning out really good. Robo Gorilla Man. Oh, man. Yeah, it just gets silly. It's 
Does Fall of Gadia actually have a book series? Or is it just campaign books? Ooh. Ooh. I am very happy with these. That makes me so happy. Oh, it's one book. Okay. Which is weird because it's such a big event. Rebute Gilliman. It's so, it, it's weird to me that the Fall of Kade would only have one book. It's such a massive event, I would have expected it to have a little bit more on its own. Uh, I have not played Helldivers 2. I don't know how much Sonam would appreciate me spreading managed democracy. Besides, with the um, kind of some projects that I have going on, plus trying to keep myself, you know, relatively healthy, I'll be pretty busy. 19 hours of a book. That's actually pretty solid for where I'm at, because usually only 14 hours for audiobooks. Okay, okay, interesting. So like I said, I think I remember um, seeing that the original, originally Fall of Cadia was a campaign set. Because it was basically the idea of, uh, uh, what was it? That you could determine how the Fall of Cadia went and yeah, I found that kind of interesting, but I didn't know I realized they actually had a book. Manage of is the best, plus these games were as nice as... That's true. That's what I've been noticing. Like, I noticed that um, I, I keep up with it because I'm at least kind of curious about what's going on with Manage Democracy. Also, because I think it's goddamn hilarious how Starship troopers -y the whole thing is. But didn't this morning, uh, you can enter your games with lots of people. Yes, lots of people lied, especially for uh, Fall of Cadia. Um, yeah, but they also kind of failed at that too, ish. If a big name event stuff, they really should just, um, it should be at events. It should be like Adepticon kind of thing. Campaign stories. I think uh, Play on Tabletop is doing something similar at a... Um, what was it? Uh, Edmonton. They're going to an Edmonton event and they're actually doing a campaign thing. Um, should, those kind of event stuff should be... You have to be at an event. You have to be at Adepticon to do the thing. Have done that actually. I wanted the nids to actually have more cool stuff first because we didn't need more things. Storm of Chaos for fantasy. Oh, yeah, they did. Yes, that's what I remember seeing. So this morning, the entire it was just a Vanguard, and now um, Cyberstan has been reclaimed. Uh, that's what I saw today. And I find that hilarious. Yeah, of course he would vote mids. Anyway, 
good thing about it was you basically got to see wh who got revealed first. Which, eh, not a big deal. At the Fall of Acadia one, they basically had it so that way it was 40k and Battle Fleet Ga Gothic. So using the fleet game as well to determine how the story went essentially, which yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I give them props for that. So we all, I won't since monster cats person. No, it doesn't. No. No. Stop harming yourself with monster energy drink. Sonam. Sonam. I need a video on how important sleep is. Oh yeah. People are trying not to sleep right now for Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> There, doctor says go to sleep. Sleep good, sleep important. I do not miss my days of only having four hours of sleep. sneak basically g fuel and test that work to be healthy no 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 stop doing that oh that's looking that's looking sexy i think that's a good non-metallic gold Done to put some pure white onto this. One or two points. It, it, I will admit, depends, but it's also the, like when you wake up. If you have consistent sleep, that's a more important part than getting a lot of sleep. Watch for Sonam's channel. She's probably going to put up a video about sleep eventually. Like, I either have sleep much longer or less than I should be awake. I feel like it, it's consistency, my man. It's all about the consistency. Ooh, I'm sweating. Yeesh. Let's see. 
How's that look on the... Mm, it's right better sometimes. Come on. Yeah, it's looking good. <laughs> I mean, I feel you on that. Nope. Wait, did I do this one? No, I didn't do this one with the, the pure white. with this. Very happy with this. There we go. Alright. Now onto something a little bit different. Uh I need, where did my purple go? Purple. This is gonna be a little bit different. Let's see. is the lights that I was thinking about because I'm basically going to it's on this one is it on this one yes it is realize that this is probably never going to be seen but eh, it might from the angle that I'm working at I'm posing this thing so maybe this might be seen uh, I've got the night lights for this I actually I read the first two books I, I don't think it's as hype as everyone says it is I'm not the biggest I won't fall over flat for it. It's just eh. It's, it's an eh. Also, when the characters are just too despicable, it's almost harder to, like, get into their characters. I'm not as invested in them just because they're complete assholes. Uh, oh, I just bought it on every... Hey, I've heard people... I mean, when people like it, they like it. I, I, I will give them that. It's not my cup of tea, but it's for someone. But I, given how many people do enjoy it, I think it's worth the read just to try it out for yourself. Uh, I don't know what's light on this, so you get to be a light. Little, little specky light. Okay. I also have to do it on these. It's one of those purchases where you have a name as a picture. 
Might as well buy something. Yeah. True. Trying something a little bit different. Uh, it's already kind of based in purple. Do I have any other lights on this? Or what would glow? I don't think so. I think those are the only two like lighty light things that I can think of on this. This dude. This dude. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, how long it's taken to make the? No, I actually have never regretted any of the knights. I actually f find them easier to paint, generally, than um, other things. Mostly because there's so many things I could just YOLO on and just be like, all right, um. Like, all of this was just significant amounts of dry brushing, which I find very soothing to just go over an entire swath of a model and just be like, yell. That's pretty good. At least for me. Wait, is Imperial Blue darker than... Okay, yes, it is. Um, I mean, sometimes the... The panels take a long time. Like that takes a good damn amount of time, but like it's the trim that kills me. But overall, yeah, I don't find it too, too bad. I'm gonna have to start going in with something that isn't just a dry brush soon. It's got to be a little bit more direct. Also, thank you. I appreciate the approval of how good it looks. I, I just find them... I find nights a little bit more soothing to paint than other things uh, that was that like I have a Celestine that I want to try and do um, that I'm working on and she's painted all white so that way like it's basically going to be dry brushing so she's got an inner glow to her since you know Celestine do you have approximate date for when your video about the world uh, you're planning to do might come out um, it's not going to be a few months. It's going to be pretty quick. I'm 
had an idea from Mason early in the video of, because we, I was trying to figure out exactly how I want to kind of position or like do the video. And he came up with a good idea of basically have it as like sitting at a desk, like Alan Wake essentially, and just have that be an image on the background as I go over topics, which I think is a great idea. And Sonam has a uh, Lego typewriter that she's gonna build. And I'm gonna use that as a photo and have that be the uh, thing I'll do. I think Lego typewriter is just kind of, it's a funny thing to have in a very, what would look like a very serious video and then you just have, you know, sitting in a Lego typewriter. I think that's kind of funny. Never done a night, but I know some of my chaos nights are more amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, the chaos night player that's in my area, he's put so much effort into his nights. Um, they're all flaming, like, uh, flame corrupted look. It's really neat. So they all look like they're completely on fire. But it takes a lot of effort. This part's gonna be interesting because I'm gonna have to go in with white in the center. And the video with a classic ping sound. Yeah, it's a good idea, actually. The, uh, what's the... Kind of just spooky scary, and then there's just a Lego type right now. How, how you guys going? Yeah. Pretty much. Well, it's just going to be an image, right? So that's, instead of having to do anything, I could just pure do pure voiceover for it. Have it be much more kind of aesthetic vibe. And then live streams will still just be painting and going over shenanigans. <sighs> samurai. Samurai, samurai, samurai. Make the, make the Discord challenging all right let's try and get pure white into the coils i think this ak white is actually much better it makes my life a lot easier So you haven't played 10th, that's good. I think 10th's been fantastic. It's a big ass tank. Like they shot the snipers out of the windows? You're playing guard, right? I'm guessing. What snipers? Necron snipers? Looking good, that's looking good. All right. I need a boy chilled blue. Get all that 
more water into this thing. I've seen this discussion that another uh, another a painter was talking about when it comes to your paints. It doesn't matter the brand as long as you practice with it and you can get a feel for how the paint works. Definitely getting into that space with uh, some of these. Can kind of feel how this one works now. Turquoise looks a little bit better than the pale blue on this. Yeah, I like that a bit better. Now this point space marines eliminators will last for days. Migrating foes. Oh yeah. Oh, oh the Raven Guard uh, detachment. Good. Detachment is annoying, but annoying in because it's actually pretty damn good. Okay, that's coming across as a glow. Which we're just gonna put a little bit of the uh, color, the lighter color down here. Nice, all right. Now it's kind of come back up in here. And just a little bit of this color. Just a little tippy tips of the lenses. Whatever the hell you want to call these. That's really good. All right. I still have to figure out how to paint these. The friggin' flame spouty bits and what to do with the hook. Cause I need to stand out. It's not too, too bad. I mean, I think it was a tangent that makes it unfair. Shroud of Psyker ability was so playful in every faction. It's, I won't say the detachment is not broken. It's just, it's kind of annoying, but it's a pretty solid uh, detachment. Ooh, okay. Those lights actually do look really good. I'm pretty happy with the lights. I only play the Raven Guard as I have Cavan Strike. Oh, Cavan Strike, yeah. Hmm. All right, that makes sense. All right. I'm actually going to yeah, about two hours in. I'm going to pop off at this point. Happy to talk more about the lore, but I think I need that typewriter made. I think I have to, hmm. Yeah, I gotta figure out a, a shoot for that photo. Cause I need, I want that photo. That photo would be, is gonna be really good. All right, and that's it for non-metallic metal gold trim. I'm actually, ooh. That looks very good. 
Uh, hopefully the video will come out soon. Yeah, I'll... Mm, not gonna give myself about two to three weeks to get it. It's just getting the photo that I want to use in the background for it, and then I'll do a good spot. Yeah, it's some solid non-metallic metal. I'm really happy with that. All right, I'm off. Thank you for joining. Joining. Thank you for being here. There. Thanks for sharing. Been great hanging out, Manson. Uh, see you on the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe on to Sonam MD. Go watch her videos. She will love it. She's cool. All right.